So now let's talk about quasi-experimental design. When we're talking about quasi-experimental design, it's very similar to experimental research. However, we're not going to have random assignment of participants to conditions. Similarly to experimental design, quasi-experimental design requires the manipulation of an independent variable. However, there is no random assignment to conditions. So some of the benefits of using a quasi-experimental design is that we actually are still manipulating that independent variable. And by doing this, we can do a few things. We can imply that there's actual causality to the relationship we're looking at. We can determine if this is a real relationship, in other words. It also helps us to control for some of those environmental factors that might be an issue. So this is a very good form of research. However, it does come with a few disadvantages. And let's cover those now. So what are the disadvantages of using a quasi-experimental design? Well, there may be a difference inherent in the two groups of people that I'm looking at. For example, if I was to look at a morning class of research methods compared to a night class of research methods, by introducing skill quizzes to the night class, I could see if those actually improve the learning that goes on in this class. Then when I compare the two classes, I could see, oh, well, does adding skill quizzes actually make things better? This could be really helpful. However, maybe there is a difference between the people who signed up for these classes. People who signed up for the morning class might perform better anyway. People who signed up for the night classes might perform worse. We don't know with a quasi-experimental design, and that can be hugely problematic when we're trying to decide if this is a causal relationship. Additionally, we want to be aware of carryover effects. There are many different types of carryover effects that can pose serious questions about the causality of the relationships we uncover. We'll talk about those a little bit later on, but just know that carryover effects can be a big problem when it comes to quasi-experimental design. So when should you use quasi-experimental research designs? Well, there are a lot of instances where this may be the appropriate design. For example, say you were a school district and you were curious if you could implement a new anti-drug program for your students. You wouldn't just want to try this out without actually testing it, so what you would do is find two similar schools. In one of those schools, you would implement the new anti-drug program, and in the other, you wouldn't. At the end of the semester or the year, you could then test the students and see what their attitudes toward drug use was. By doing that, we could compare, would this be effective in a similar environment? We can see this relationship without actually having to implement something we don't fully understand. This can be really nice because it's a natural setting and it feels very realistic. We're seeing the program we're creating in the environment it will be used. If it is successful in one program, if we see that there is an increase in anti-drug attitudes by the end of the semester, then we have a reasonable assumption that we could implement this program in the similar school to obtain those same results. So let me give you one more example of how a quasi-experimental design might actually look. So first, let's say that we're going to test pro-social lyrics on pro-social behavior. In other words, by listening to a song that has pro-social lyrics, does it actually increase your behavior? Or are you going to act in a more pro-social way? So what we'd do is we would set up a cafe or some place for people to come in, and then we're going to play songs that have pro-social lyrics. So for all the customers who come in while the pro-social lyrics are playing, we're going to then measure their pro-social behavior. In other words, how much do they tip the barista who brought them that coffee? Right? By doing this, we can actually see the people that come in, they're not randomly assigned, they just showed up while we were playing this music, and we can measure their behavior, the tipping, something that would be pro-social, giving to someone else. After we've done this, we then might switch the music to lyrics that are not pro-social lyrics. In other words, they come in and there's just other music playing. For all those customers who come in, again, not randomly assigned to this condition, during that time, we will then measure their behavior. Are they more likely to tip when other songs are playing, when songs that are not pro-socially lyric songs are playing? And so doing this, we can see that we have a manipulation of an independent variable, the pro-social lyrics, either the songs that had them versus the songs that didn't, and the dependent variable, the pro-social behavior, in this case, of tipping. By doing this, we can then compare how people responded when they were in group one or group two and we can measure that difference. This would be a great example of a quasi-experimental study.